Hello, and welcome to Fun with QShell episode 4. We're going to take a look at public key authentication between two IBM IL PARs and an HMC in this episode. A um, few things just to go over the environment here for you. Uh, I do have two LPAR set up. We've got OWL and Shark. And you can refer to them for this exercise as PowerI and PowerIB. Shark will be the B system and OWL is just PowerI. So let's take a look at our TCP config. You want to make sure your host tables are set up. So I've got an entry for my HMC, PowerI, which is OWL, and PowerB, which is Shark. Make sure that's the same on both systems. And then option 12, make sure your name is set correctly. I'm going to assume you have the required software installed for this. Um, QShell and PACE, you probably already have. Um, SC1, IBM Portable Utilities for I, is required. Uh, base and option 1. If you need to put license programs on, also include uh, OPS, 5733 OPS. Uh, I won't be using it today, but some of my other episodes will include some of that coming up soon. Okay. So I'm going to create a user profile called test on all three uh, systems, both IBM I's and the LPAR. Uh, sorry, IBM I's and the HMC. And we're going to set up a public key authentication for that profile only between all three nodes. So go ahead and create a profile. Make sure you give it a home directory. It doesn't have to exist yet, and you don't want it to either. Don't create it right now. And let's log off and log in as that profile. I'll do both at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that home directory now. Doing it now will set the proper ownership of the uh, directory, whereas before it would have been owned by QSEC Offer. And the directory and files have specific permissions and ownerships for this to work. Um, and there's only one change that we're going to make here, but it depends on your system values and stuff. So just check it on your end. You might not have to actually run the commands. I will for my lab, though. Okay. So I'm going to go into PACE to create my uh, SSH keys. And we haven't talked about that before, but it's similar to QShell, diff different environment. There's tons of information out there on it. Uh, you can go ahead and read that if you want. We do a call QP2 term to get in there. All right, and I'm going to CD to my home directory. Okay, and I'm going to generate the keys now. The command to do this is ssh-keygen-t, and then the type of key you want to use. A lot of a lot of choices here. Some of the original ones were RSA and DSA. If you're looking at some of the original documentation, you'll probably see that. Uh, there's some newer keys out now that are more secure. So I'll b include some links in the notes so you can pick whichever one you want. So you can get some more information about those. Okay. You hit enter here. It's going to ask where you want to store the file. Take the defaults. Do not put a passphrase in. And that's it. We'll do the same thing over on the other box. Okay, cool. Now we're going to make a copy. Well, let me just show you what's in there first. So that created this .ssh directory for us. And if we look inside of there, you'll see we have a public key and a private key. We're going to make a copy of our public key and store it as an authorized keys file. So you just do a simple copy. And we'll do the same thing over here. And let's see the uh, file permissions now to see if we need to change them. And this is actually up a directory. So on my home directory, <laughs> you can see test is open for everybody. Um, that's equivalent to a 777 in Linux or Unix. So we're going to change that. Um, the command is not native to IBM I folk, but uh, Linux people will know what it is. It's 
uh, change file protections. So of course it's called chamod and we're going to set it to 755 and for our directory test. And we'll do the same thing on both systems. If you don't do this when you go to do your um, authentication between systems it won't automatically work. You'll be asked for the password and that, that will work but you just won't be able to authenticate without the password. And there we go. So we got that changed. Okay. Now let's go ahead and exchange our keys. Several ways of doing this, but for me, here's what I do. Let's see where I'm at. CD into test.ssh. And I'm going to take a cat of this pub file. That gives us our key. I'm going to copy that and paste it over on the other system. So let's go over to Shark and we'll do a work link home test.ssh and our authorized keys file we're going to edit that add a line and just paste in the uh, key from the other box. So now I'll copy this local one and paste it into the OWL authorized key file. Make sure you save and exit that So here you can see we have the local key for power I, that's OWL, and the remote key for power I B. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to connect across systems here. I'm going to go into Q shell. And I'm not going to specify a user ID. It's going to automatically assume whoever I'm logged in as is who I want to connect as. And the very first time you do this, it's going to ask you if you want to accept this. You just type in yes and hit enter. And if everything worked right, that's all you should get. To see what box you're actually on, you could run a command like hostname. And that'll give you the, the hostname of the box you're currently logged into. And then to exit, you just type in exit. And then you should see we're now back on Power I. We can do the same thing the other direction, just to make sure it's working both ways. And I accept that. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and exchange keys with our HMC. Let's exit out of there. bring up that authorized keys file and I'm going to open up a putty session to the HMC okay. oh. forgot my password for a second <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to create a user called test on the HMC as well. You could do this from the GUI, of course. Um, but here's the command. If you want to learn how the command line on the HMC, uh, just Google that command. There's plenty of documentation out there for it. Uh, the name of the profile here is test. We've got some roles, password defined, and remote. Just gives us web access if we wanted to log in with that. Go ahead and create it. Okay. Now we're going to run a command called make auth keys. So let's make auth keys dash dash add. This is going to tell it to import those keys from the other system into this test one. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to log on as test first. Test. Okay, let's try that again. Make auth keys dash dash add single quote. And then we go back over here and copy this. Paste it and put the single quote at the end. 
and do it again for the other key. That should be it. We should now be able to connect uh, from our IBM I to the HMC. So let's give it a try. Back into QShell. HMC01 is what my local host table entry said for the name. And again, we have to accept that. And there we go. Now, there is no um, host name command on the HMC. I mean, there is, it's just not host name. But um, you can do something else like lshmc v. And there you go, you get the version of the HMC we're running. Um, that went a little quicker than I thought, so I think I'll go ahead and show you how to transfer a file from one LPAR to the other. Um, so let's get out of here. Okay, so let's take a look at our home directory. You see we have nothing in there. There actually is a, a hidden file or two in there. Uh, you just can't see it without changing some options there. But we're going to create a file on Power I and transfer it to Power B. So I'm going to QShell. CD to home. Test. To create a file, you do a command called touch. And you can set the CSID by doing a dash uppercase C. And let's give it a file name. File.txt. Okay, so if we do an ls, now we have the file. So we're going to do a scp of file.txt. So you, it's local, then remote. So remote, the syntax is going to be power ib, and then where you want the file to go. And you could rename it on the copy command as well. But All right, so it's secure copy this file to system power IB at location at. and if everything works it should just put the file there let's go over here and do an F5 and there it is alright that's it for this one uh, thanks for watching